We are live. Welcome to episode 18 of the RetroSlot Podcast, featuring Jay Sniperton. What's going on, Jay? Uh, <laughs> a bunch of computer issues right before the episode. I'm not good. Uh, got the second COVID shot on Sunday, and Ooh. I was feverish for the last couple of days. I pretty much slept like 11 hours last night, 10, 11 hours, and had mm. the chills and, you know, all that stuff, sweating went it out you know yeah feeling better today doing? yeah i am feeling better today i like woke that's up good. i like took my temperature no fever that's good yeah it, it seems to hit different people a little differently especially that second shot but i that, that seems to be pretty common it's like you get it on like the day and not feeling great that day and then not feeling great the next day but then mm-hmm. usually it clears up a day later right yeah that's what I've been worth hearing. it though yeah hopefully <laughs> Yeah, throw some hopefully. extra limbs. <laughs> That'd be nice. Superpowers. I could use an extra <laughs> hand every once in a while. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yeah. just, a, just a little, just a little something extra. A little something extra, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the first time you've had uh, you have Rocket Knight playing in the background? I do, but it's not. It's not the frame rate isn't doing what I want it to be doing. You can see like the black bar going down the screen. So I, huh. I gotta sync the camera up to the. 60 fps of the the game screen but whatever it doesn't look know, bad just a little extra flair i guess but uh, i'm looking forward to talking about that game it doesn't sound like you are <laughs> no 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 i didn't say i didn't like it i oh, just okay. i played it last night when i was all feverish and, oh, and stuff and yeah. i just i got to the game over and i was like i can't like i just i had a headache going and i was just like all right that's that's enough for me for tonight you, do you, you ever have week? It was a quick week. We only had one week between episodes. Usually we have two to kind of explore a game, which I think is better, to be honest with you, because I'd rather play a little bit more of a game than go in like kind of not knowing exactly a, much about it, I guess. At the same time, if I don't like a game, I pretty much know it right off the bat. <laughs> like, oh, I hate this. You know right away. <laughs> I mean, it's not like Rocket Knight's Rocket Knight wasn't a very long game by any means. No, it certainly isn't. I think speed runs can do it in like 20 minutes. You know, but like speed runs could do that. You can't really tell how long a game Those is, but bastards. how fast it can be speed run. But I, I think like if you're good at it, you probably beat it completely in 40 minutes. No problem. Like if you're good really? at it wow. and can beat it like yeah. on one life or one continue or whatever. Yeah, there's not very many levels. No, but we'll, we'll talk about it later. Um, yeah. I, I'm kind of interested in like, so... Now that you're vaccinated, like, is are are you are you guys starting to open up? Like, your are your kids in school? They're too, uh, they're so too young. Theo will start. Theo's gonna start kindergarten in the fall. Okay. So he turns five in like three weeks from yeah. today. So it's yeah, and he, we want to get them into activities and whatnot. Um, yeah. We've just been kind of putting everything on hold. Obviously, he's a he's a hyperactive kid. And it'll be interesting. We did our first, uh, my wife's friends are all vaccinated and a couple of them are nurses and like, yeah, Jay, you're like 80% vaccinated since you had your first one and, and stuff. And if you're comfortable, we, you know, so we just had like a small get together. There was maybe a dozen people or so, Oh, nice. like six kids. Whew. Yeah. Six a lot kids. of, a lot of little toddlers <laughs> running around and it was just good for them to have, you know, we don't really get to spend time with friends with kids often. Yeah. And so my son's a very social kid. And so is our, our one and a half year old. And so they got to run around and pass out, you know? Yeah. That's from good. all the energy. Was yeah. it nice to like see some adults in like a yeah social setting? <laughs> yeah. I was still a little anxious cause I wasn't fully vaccinated, but yeah, you know, it was all right. Well, now that you're max, well, you're, you're almost max vax, max right? You're, max. Yeah, you're, two you're close. Two weeks, you'll be max vax. But I, I, I've been, uh, we've been going out like uh, Connecticut's fully open now. Um, mm. So we still wear a mask when we go out, but we've been going out and it's been wonderful to get yeah. back out of the house. I got to say, it's just been awesome. <laughs> Have you guys gone out like, it was that like the only thing you guys have done since? Yeah, we haven't we haven't really done anything else yet. Yeah, no restaurants, no movies, none of that. Yeah, I'm a little it's tough with little kids, kids, anyways. Or... Yeah, 
<laughs> not really the, the cleanest. cleanest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were talking about you you started taking uh or you had a photo shoot today and the allergies yeah. started kicking up. Yeah, well, all of a sudden, this is the first time I, I take Claritin every day during the spring just to because I know when they do come, it's a real pain in the ass. But today was the first time I was outside. I was fine all day until I got outside and I was in like a big open field. And I could feel like my eyes starting to dry out and tear up, you know, like that feeling where like they're a little burny and teary. Mm-hmm. And then my I got a oh, little yeah. sniffly, which you could probably still hear every once in a while. It sounds like I'm doing a rail of coke. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the Coke. Yeah. No, well, I mean, it sounds like that because that's what's happening. But I also, <laughs> but I also different, have a little bit of a different else. kind of podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got a lot to talk about tonight. I, I can't wait to talk about Retro Night. It's, uh, I think I've said before, it's one of my favorite 16 bit games. Um, but then we also have, uh, some news. Do you want to start with the news? Yeah, we can do that. Um, okay. So Sonic Origins was recently announced uh, to be released next year. I don't know if they gave a final date or anything, but it's going to have Sonic 1, 2, and 3, Sonic and & Knuckles, and Sonic CD. And I believe at least Sonic 3 is going to be widescreen. I, I think all of them are going to be widescreen, 16 by 9, which is super cool. Yeah. This is actually really big news. I, if, if you're a Sonic fan, um, obviously you're going to be happy to see Sonic come out again. Sonic 3, though, because it's got Michael Jackson music in it, doesn't come out a lot. Like, it's not on mm. the mini Genesis that came out. It's not on a lot of the, like, Sega Genesis collections that have come out. So it's it's not the easiest game to play uh, if you don't have a Sega Genesis and a, and a cartridge. Um, so it's actually nice to see that. And then also, Sonic CD, obviously, is... Uh, I, a lot of people consider that to be the best of the like 2D original Sonics. Really? So it's nice to see that one on there. And then getting a 16 by 9 format, that'll be great. So it'll look good on like a modern television screen. That's that's a nice feature. I've never played Sonic CD. Yeah, it's not it's not super accessible because it's it's only on the Sega CD and it's not like one of the popular ones. Like if you get a Genesis collection, it's not going to be on there because it's it'd have to be like a Sega CD collection or something. I don't think right. it's on the Mega Drive, the Mini Mega Drive either. Mm-mm. But so it, it's a good one. Speaking of CD, like uh, you know, Sega CD. Have you seen Analog's tweets with Sega CD games in them? No, that's interesting. They've been yeah, because you know how they generally put tweets out with kind of the animated gifs, the, yeah. the little mini videos of you. You you miss said gifs. <laughs> what is this Christmas <laughs> whoever but, they've uh, got doing those those gifts is friggin' awesome at it because oh, yeah, they almost the always perfectly loop it so yeah. you can't tell where it starts and ends right. and they're like really some really great games like some really obscure stuff like there's a couple of times where I've seen that and be like what game is that I want to check that out mm-hmm. I, I love following them as a company on Twitter just because of that <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Stop tweeting here. out uh, a couple of Sega CD games because they ha- they have not announced anything Sega CD related. Yeah. And, well, uh, you can't know. you play Sega CD? Ga- I'm pretty sure you could play Sega CD games on the on the Mega SG. Probably I'm positive. That would be kind of a cop out though if they did that. Yeah, I mean they are, and they are making the Turbo Duo. Right. Which that's the first time they've released something with a CD ROM. Do- okay, so. So let's assume that they are going to make a CD drive to play Sega CD games on. Let's just make that assumption. Do you think it's an add-on for the Mega SG? Their current it Sega- should be. Yeah, they're so j- a little bit of background here for anybody who's new. Uh, the, the Mega SG, is, a company named Analog made an, a, a device called the Mega SG, which is a Mega Drive or Sega Genesis, depending on where you're from. It's it's an you know it's a it, it, it it's one of those right it's brand new it plays cartridges so you can actually buy a cartridge and it's got fairly good uh hardware based emulation to it uh, it's not the exactly like the old system but you can plug in HDMI you know it's got modern outputs and it looks fantastic um so 
uh, they've also announced the Turbo Duo, which we've talked about before on this podcast. And the Turbo Duo is going to be able to play CD-based uh, Turbo Graphics or PC Engine games. So the speculation is, do they come out with a new Mega SG or a Mega CD that has both cartridge and CD support, like the Turbo Duo, or do they just put an add-in, an add-on that you place your Mega SG into, a la the original Genesis sitting on top of the Sega CD? Sorry, that was I just felt the need to explain. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, it's all good. So you you think it should be an add-on? <sighs> Would it be weird that it would be backwards from the original? Because the CD mean? added onto a uh, Genesis as opposed to a Genesis added onto a CD. Well, that's how it worked before, right? Is you put your you in my theoretically you'd put your your Mega SG on top of your Mega CD, right? That's how it worked with the Genesis and the Sega CD, right? Is you just stacked it right. on top, right? But I'm saying we'd be putting a CD on top of the Genesis as opposed to a Genesis on top of the CD. I think the Genesis would go on top of the... I think the Mega SG would go on top of the Mega right, CD. But, right, but we already have the Genesis and there's no like slot on the bottom of that or anything. Is there not? On the analog Genesis? I don't think so. I wonder if we could just plug in to like, like a port on the back it? what's Daisy that chain it or something yeah i got it right here i'm just gonna unplug it and look at it now thinking about it like <laughs> i'm just picturing analog being in a in a creative meeting trying to figure this out and them just being like screw it we're just gonna make a standalone this is too complicated yeah like, right <laughs> and now i could see that too because you're right there is no port on the bottom there is usb but that's used for power and then there's HDMI. They've used these HDMI ports for data before. If you get the analog DAC, which allows you to actually plug mm -hmm. this into an old TV, this functions as a data port and just sends the data to the DAC. So they could use the HDMI as a data port, I suppose. But really, <laughs> I, I wonder... If you're just put, if you're just gonna place this on top of the unit and they don't actually connect together, maybe they just loop like daisy chain the HDMI so that when you're playing on a cartridge, this is pr providing the signal, and you're when you're playing on a Sega CD, that's providing the HDMI, but they don't actually communicate together because they don't need to really. Right, curveball. Yeah, uh -huh. they're coming out with the duo. Yeah, it has the CD. Yeah. What if they just are teasing the fact that you can probably download some firmware that will allow you to play Sega CD games on the Duo? Yeah, you can do that now. I have a I have a uh, memory card in here, actually. No, no, no. I'm saying, though, to be able to use the actual CDs on the Duo. Oh. Oh. Interesting. That's interesting. Because they, you know, they have announced the duo, and they're going to yeah. come out with that eventually. So, it's and like they wondering. always announce, uh, they always have unofficial firmware for these boxes that, like, you could play NES games on this. You could play, I don't know, a bunch of games. I, I, Game Gear. I know you could play uh, Master System. You could play a bunch of stuff on this. It's enough, but not the actual cards. Yeah, not the actual cards though. But if you could play the actual CDs in the Turbo Duo, ooh. <laughs> that is interesting i mean why not why not i don't know it's, why not it's new technology yeah yeah i mean it CDs. is yeah you, i guess they'd probably have to put the uh you know since it's fpga they'd have to put like the sega cd hardware on there too maybe i don't know i don't know it's complicated yeah i don't know i can't <laughs> i don't pretend to understand how that works but it is moving on it's cool to think about <laughs> yeah all right, what uh, the heck is this thing? So it's I it I just thought it was worth talking about. So <clears throat> a new retro console was announced. It's called the C two fifty six Phoenix Gen X, and Phoenix with an F, like you know F O E N I X. I'm assuming that's Phoenix. Yeah. And there's a trailer out, and it's Phoenix Retro Systems, and this thing looks like it's like a cube, and it looks like a PC. But like everything in there is mega old. Like it's all 
You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they're trying to create a new system that essentially, it, I think it's like an FPGA, but it runs like Atari stuff, NES, Super Nintendo. That has like ports built in. I give this thing the chance of releasing about a 10% chance. I don't think this thing's going to see daylight personally. Uh -huh. Just, it's too niche of a system. All they've got but, is a render too. They don't have any actually, they're not showing yeah. any actual hardware. It's just, I don't understand what the use case of this thing is. It's and I probably think it's similar most, to a mister, right? Well, that, that was the argument. Like, why not just run a mister? But it's got, um, I think what they're trying to do is give people an opportunity to create new games and have it run on this thing. Okay. But it's, yeah, this is really old hardware. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's 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 got like 3D renders of the the motherboard and stuff and it's showing all the specs and it's like 512 kilobyte memory you know it's like really terrible there okay so at the end of the video they have their own marketing kind of spiel let me read this cuz it's actually good they say the opportunity to rise has come the C256 Phoenix Gen X has been conceived with the idea that creative minds need to be awakened once more, and that there is no more need to follow a predestined path. Don't make the same mistake of the path. Past, make new mistakes. <laughs> Don't let laziness dictate your creative choices. <laughs> Greatness comes from hardship, not from cutting short and saving time. Be great and make the machine your own. <laughs> With all my heart, Stephanie. <laughs> Why do I feel like that's like a, you know... It's like an advertisement out of a self-help book, self self-help book or something. Yeah. You know? Why well, I, I just realized it's got like question marks. Am I IPS question mark? ARM question mark? I don't know. It's your it's choice. scheduled to ship in mid-fall 2021, which seems awfully aggressive. <laughs> There's no way. I'm sorry. Like, I wish them all the best of luck, but I don't even know what it is. Yeah. It seems like you can swap out modules with different processors, depending on which yeah. you, what you want to play. I don't know. It's kind of an interesting idea. If you're a tinkerer, I could see this being interesting to you. Yeah. But somebody like me who like likes plug and play stuff, this just it, it's too yeah. much. So I don't see the yeah, like you'll be able to swap out the hardware inside the box <laughs> and play like Commodore VIC twenty games, and then swap it out again and play Apple II games, or Commodore C sixty four, or Atari, or Amiga. Oh, that's weird. I don't know. That's pretty interesting. I wonder where they're getting that old hardware because nobody's making that shit anymore. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, it's I'm I'm like on their homepage. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I might I, how much how much are they asking for uh pre-orders? 500 is the base. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> I was like And then the modules I'm in. Are, <laughs> Yeah, all the modules are like 100 to 200 like all the chips and whatnot. Oh like my it's God. Yeah, it's basically a PC. Like, realistically, if you're a tinkerer or a modder or a developer or something, this could be interesting. But, yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, I get it at least now. It's not like a Mr. where it's emulating the hardware. This is the hardware that those original right. machines ran on. But it's it's kind of, it's it's not exactly the hardware because it's you can swap out modules to make it pretty similar to that hardware. Uh, but then have it hooked up to modern displays and stuff like that. I mean, you know, it's got a ton of joystick ports on the front. Like anything from an NES Genesis, it looks like. Atari. I, it's pretty neat. I don't know. It's kind of neat. I'm interested. I'd love I mean, to see something I, else I besides a render. Right. I can appreciate that these things are becoming to exist because, you know, it might be opening up the the market for more things like this to be created that might fit my wheelhouse more yeah. kind of thing. So it seems like it's out of my price range, to be honest with you. Oh yeah. Well that too. 
<laughs> like I, I like messing around with stuff, but that's a little expensive. Yeah. Uh, I found out a really cool one. So speaking of the PC Engine and Turbo Graphics, Terra Onion has announced the HDMI SSD S3. Uh, this is a very cool device. It kind of slides into on the back of a Turbo Graphics or a PC Engine. There's this huge port that's got all these pins in it, and you could. It, it was originally used, I think, to slide on the CD add-on. Uh, but what this thing does is it slides on. Um, and can output video in HDMI or RGB. So you can still hook it up to a uh, old TV or you can hook it up to a new TV. Uh, it also has a sound card in there. So all, you get digital sound coming out of your HDMI. Uh, and it's also got an FPGA based uh, emulator. So it can emulate uh, CD games. You can load CD games onto a SD card. Uh, it can even emulate the super graphics, which is, you know, basically a different console, <laughs> um, which only had six games on it. The six games were impressive looking for sure, but it's hard to justify getting a super graphics um, just for those six games. So this is a neat option for that. Uh, it's got 728p uh, HDMI output. Uh, and I, I don't know, it looks like a great solution for kind of modernize. If you want to play these games on original hardware, this seems like a great solution for that. Um, as opposed to something like what analog is doing with the turbo duo. I mean, this looks pretty cool. Yeah. If you, yeah, if you have the original hardware, right. If you already have a PC, PC engines are super cheap. Uh, you get them out of Japan and I, I, they're under a hundred bucks. Um, Turbo Graphics is, are a little different, but they I don't believe they're region locked. I think that you, you can play games on either one. I think actually I, Turbo Graphics are region locked, but PC oh, Engine are. is not. Oh, okay. Because I got that. Uh, I have that Japanese uh, duo. Yeah, and I can play both PC Engine games, but I can only play Japanese Turbo Graphics. Okay. All right, that's weird. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I did not think that that was the case when I bought it. Otherwise, I would not have bought it. But, I have um, but yeah, this thing is pretty cool. I mean, it's got a built-in super, super, super graphics. Uh, it's got 720p HDMI video. Uh, you can, you know, load CD games onto it. So you, there's more CD games than there are cartridge games for the for that family of consoles. Uh, it's even got like this menu system that shows like the cover art of the game. So like you could scroll through and like you see the cover art of the game, which I don't know. I think it's kind of a neat thing. And it's coming out in July or pre-order start in July. Sorry. Oh, nice. Does it say when it's coming out? Uh, no. And it's uh, I don't know if you said it. It's 229. Is that what it said? Uh, yeah, I think that sounds or right. $300. 232 trying to remember that's not pounds that is it's around three hundred dollars i think is it okay <laughs> i was gonna yeah. say um which is about right for terra onion stuff you know like their their stuff is generally pretty good uh but a little bit expensive i have a bunch of their devices around uh in in the house here and uh they've all been very good but they're not cheap which is okay I mean, but that's roughly the same cost as the analog, too. Yeah. Right? The analog's $199. Yeah. There you go. So that's even cheaper. But this is using original hardware, which right. matters to some people. It's true. Uh, I think it's pretty neat. I, I have a Turbo Graphics, uh, but I need to get it recapped. I might recap it myself. I'll, I'll look into it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, what else we got here? Oh, okay. So you know how uh, your Super Nintendo looks like it's been in a smoker's house for the last 30 years? <laughs> what? Uh, Mine? No. <laughs> Super Nintendo's had uh, a weird problem where they would yellow over time, especially if they were exposed to UV light. But even if they weren't, um, they just yellowed over time, especially the bottom ones, especially the early ones. I think they actually fixed it for like the the later super nintendos uh but if you have one of those and you just can't stand looking at it uh you can actually get these 
uh, smoke transparent shells. Uh, and these are being produced now. You, they're for pre-order right now. Uh, and it's just a clear kind of smoke colored uh, new shell that's about 110 bucks uh, from the retro gamer store, which I thought was pretty nice for that console specifically that just, you know, it could work perfectly on the inside, but it's just so rottenly ugly on the outside that a lot of people don't want them, you know? <laughs> How do I feel like this is the story of my life? <laughs> you know, they work on the inside, but the outside's all yeah. haggard. I, I don't know. I like this option, though. It, like, this really appeals to me because there's something there's something noble about, like, kind of pulling something that nobody else wanted because it was so ugly and kind of refurbishing it to make it useful again. You know? Yeah. I dig it. I'm yeah. surprised they don't have like a picture of it fully kind of put together. It's like all just pictures of the shell. It'd be it'd be nice to see what it looks like pieced together before you purchase it too. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Super Nintendo used like green circuit boards, so it's not gonna be all that attractive. Do you remember <laughs> <laughs> do you remember like when Apple started that wave like in the late nineties, early two thousands of having everything be transparent parent, and like colorful? So you buy like an iMac that was, mm -hmm. you know, like bright blue. The G3s or whatever. Yeah. And then like everybody like saw it and started doing it. So your stapler was like <laughs> bright red and like see-through plastic. Like everything started doing it for a good long time. Yeah, that was me in high school. Our high school uh, computer lab. I, I remember specifically opening the door and just seeing a sea of colored iMacs. All different colors? Really? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a lot better than a sea of beige boxes, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> All these innuendos in my head right now. It's fine. <laughs> Would you do this? Would you take a, a, a Super Nintendo and put it in a non-original case? Just not for not for $110 plus shipping, no. No. Because I bought you know, I bought like a complete in box snes that was meant for not much more than that that's a good point because so, you can still get them pretty readily online yeah like to get to get one that's pretty pretty new looking you know it's not going to be that expensive but if you if you like you know if you want to make everything look gunmetal gray or something you know and you have money and you just it's the what is it the the form over the form over factor or whatever i'm more of a person who just likes stuff to be minty and work yeah but if you really enjoy the way that things look and want to make things look a certain way it could be cool yeah I, they I have like it because too. you could just make it not look smoked out like brown right. i bet there's cheaper options too if you have just a like a beat up snes there's probably cheaper shells out there i would think yeah i don't know i've never seen them but I've never looked that hard, so I've seen like clear ones and stuff, which would be pretty cool. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, the next story is NES save states have been added to the Mister, so the Mister can now have save states in your NES games. So save states, if you don't know, this is something that's really common for retro re-releases on like the Switch or the PlayStation or whatever. But you can just at any point just save your game state so like if you are in the middle of a jump in mario on world 8 1 but you need to you need to walk away you could just save the state you know turn off your console and come back to it at that exact moment right uh and that's something that uh mister has not been able to do in the past it's something that is a very convenient feature um especially with retro games that don't necessarily have save games um you know the 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 joke was back in the day that you'd just pause the game and leave the console on for, you know, 24 hours until you could come back to it. Uh, this is a really nice feature. I was happy to see this. I really like the mister and it just continues to improve. I agree. I mean, I'm just thinking if your mom comes in and tells you to go outside and play and threatens to turn off the console. So you have to like unplug the AV cables in the back. This is the solution for you. Yeah. Yeah, my mom doesn't do that anymore, which is good. <laughs> anymore. 
<laughs> so that's it for Almost. news. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot. No, a whole lot. I think we found some good stuff there, though. I'm excited about some of that stuff, especially Sonic. Yeah. Well, the the 30th anniversary Sonic stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if there, you know, isn't more stuff to be announced soon regarding Sonic. Yeah, Sega's on a roll lately. Sega was really. I feel like they just kind of were kind of down and out for like a decade. But they've just every time they talk right now, I get excited. Whether it's new stuff like Yakuza or old stuff like their re-releases, they do excellent re-releases too. If you haven't seen uh, the Sega Sega Ages stuff on the Nintendo Switch, they take some of their older games and they re-release them, obviously. But they do an excellent job of kind of updating them as well. Like Virtual Racing, like runs at 1080p at you know it runs at 1080p. Uh, in widescreen, and it looks fantastic on a like on the Switch or on a TV. Um, they've they've been doing a really good job. They have M2 doing all that stuff for them, who do an excellent job of kind of doing those re-releases. So hopefully, those same people are working on Sonic Origins. Nice. So Rocket Knight, Rocket Knight. What did you think of Rocket Knight, Jay? You didn't get to play I it much. I enjoyed it. I mean, I, I wasn't feeling very good last night when I played it, but yeah. there's some things that definitely stuck out to me. I got to, I think it was probably the last boss of the second main level. Like, I never knew when the level started and when they ended because it's like you'd go from platforming and then there'd be a boss fight and then there'd immediately be like one little side thing and then another boss fight and then another boss fight and then level over it's like wait well what exactly <laughs> you know it's just it, yeah it's like bang 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 and uh i got to the it was like a little tank and he was like it he had like a certain rhythm of the the firing and you had to jump and and attack but i kept oh, yes. like getting stuck behind it and stuff and then i just like wiped and game over and i was like all right i need to go to bed because i was just not feeling well yeah that's and uh yeah so first of all how far did you get i'm sure you probably beat it i have not beaten this game i was trying um i don't know probably about a year ago when i first i bought the cartridge about a year ago and i was playing on uh an actual original snes and i i was working on actually like completing it uh and then I, somehow i got distracted so i never did so I started again a couple of days ago in preparation for the episode, but I only got to like level four or something like that. It gets, I think this game gets relatively hard. Uh, yeah. Like it starts off really easy, which is great. It's got a good difficulty ramp to it where it starts off easy. You can really get used to the controls and like, it's got some interesting maneuvers, right? It's like, you've got like your sword attack, which also kind of spits out like this, like, uh, you know, spinning fire projectile and then you've got to jump but if you hold down your sword attack you've got the rocket which you can aim as well you can go straight up or at a diagonal and then you can use that for uh for attacking enemies or for navigating or for some light puzzling as well pretty light puzzling um but it, it, i don't know to me this game i talk so highly about this game because it looks awesome like it just looks fantastic for a sega genesis game and it plays really well it's it's one of those games that just like it, you're constantly changing what you do sometimes you're doing like a side-scrolling shooter sometimes you're doing a a platformer sometimes you're you know just you know an extra platformer sometimes you're piloting this giant mech uh everything you do just feels fun and it feels good like it, they've just they didn't miss out on anything like they so often do when they try and cram a bunch of gameplay styles into one game. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they'll miss on one thing. Like, ah, oh, I love the platforming in that game, but the shooter parts <laughs> suck, <laughs> you know, like right. stuff like that. And I think they just nailed every part of it. It's just a charming game. It's a fun game and it just looks fantastic. I think it's one of the best looking games on the Genesis. It does look really nice. Uh, a few of the things as far as gameplay that stuck out to me, you, there's not really a limit to how fast you can press the attack button. Yeah. Like you can just mash it as fast as you want. Although the projectiles only come out so often. Yeah. Like you can be like, but it's like wop, wop, wop. And then when I was playing the first level and I got to that first kind of like, 
ledge that you couldn't quite reach just by jumping. I yeah. spent a good two or three minutes trying to like go back and like run and sprint and jump. And I like, I couldn't figure it out. And then I was like, I wonder what happens if I hold down jump and then I held it down and you did like a swirly thing like Sonic. And I was like, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I was just like, well, what if I like held the direction while I'm holding jump? And it's just like, you just like start flying. I'm like, Oh, and <laughs> you know, the lights all start going off in my head. Um, in a lot of games, when there's vertical stuff, when you're jumping on platforms, it's not quite like that because he's a possum. So and possums hang down. So as you're jumping, you're actually hanging down kind of bionic commando style with his tail yeah. going up and down. And you're slippery on those on those little slopes, too. And. Um, God, some of the other stuff you can you can use that charge jump to kind of almost rocket yourself forward and, and hit enemies and stuff like that without taking damage, kind of like uh, Altered Beast a little bit. And uh, just a lot of unique gameplay stuff. It felt like a mixture of Sonic with a whole bunch of other games and platforms like Earthworm Jim with all the vertical platforming and Mega Man with all the boss fights. And Yeah, the boss then, fights are really... There's a ton of them, and they're yeah. really good. Yeah. And then there's a lot of it seems like there's a lot of kind of in between levels where you're flying and trying to hit enemies and stuff like that too. Yeah. It's kind of a mashup of a lot of really good platforming games from the eighties and nineties. Yeah. I feel like it, it, it does a good job of never doing one thing for so long that I get, I get bored of it. Like mm -hmm. sometimes I get stuck on something, right? It's like one part is just hard. So it'll take me a while just to beat that level. Um, but, you can be guaranteed that the next level is going to be completely different. Maybe you'll be riding in a mine cart. Maybe you'll be piloting a giant, a giant mine cart thing. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. Uh, maybe you'll be hanging off the bottom of an airship and like navigating that, you know, like there's, it just constantly is changing on a level to level basis. I, I got to imagine that this was a fairly expensive game to develop just because of how many, you know, just how different everything is from level to level. It, and the quality of the animation and the graphics. Yeah, I definitely want to jump back in when I'm feeling a little bit better and I can put a little bit more time into it. But I it was surprising. You know, I've known about this game and Sparkster for a long, long time, and I just have never played it. And I'm glad that we uh, chose to do it. There's some interesting facts. Too about about this game in the series that that I kind of wrote down at first, I was like, you know, what kind of animal is he? Because he's just, it's, it's hard to tell. It's like, is he a mouse? Is he a rat? Is he you a can't raccoon? That is what clearly is an apostle. <laughs> you can't, what? I don't understand that I can't. There we go. How come yours is a different color than mine? Mine's <laughs> mint. Mine's like new. <laughs> so you got the tag. Yours, Mine's got a broken off yours tag. Yours faded? Yeah, is yours faded? I don't think so. I don't yeah. have a manual either, which is bummer. Oh man, yeah. see? I, I, I spent a little bit of a premium. I spent like $74 to get this thing shipped, but it was actually, I got it in like two days. That's nice. Yeah, I was very surprised. I still um, don't have a copy of the Mario RPG. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of waiting, it's getting more to get expensive them. too. It's yeah. not going to get any cheaper at this point. But uh, it was designed by, I'm going to butcher this, Nobuya Nakazato. Nailed it. Who designed the con uh, designed a few Contra games such as Alien Wars, Hardcore, Shattered Soldier, which I thought to be interesting because this is not really like those games. I don't know. In that, in a way, you're right, but in in another way, it, you could feel like the lineage a little bit. Like, sure, the smoothness of the motion, the way that Rocket Knight runs and navigates a level. You know, it it's definitely not a it's not a Contra game, but you could feel that that design influence a little bit like polish super sure. polish yeah uh i found it interesting that the u.s version had it was more difficult it has more difficulty settings and there are secret difficulties in like the japanese version but the u.s version is generally thought to be more difficult because in the hard mode you get like one life and one continue and that's Oof. it yeah so you, get a, you get a one life it yeah, pretty much. I played it on yeah. easy, which was like three lives and two continues. And then there's a, a child's mode, which is like five lives and three continues or something like that. Mm. So it's it, the game itself doesn't change, but it just gives you more attempts. 
Um, the Sparkster, which is the, you know, we're not, we're not really talking about Sparkster, but Sparkster on Genesis and Sparkster on Super Nintendo are different games. Okay. Even though they have the same art, they came out at the same time, but they're different games. Sparkster on Genesis is the true sequel to this. And Sparkster on SNES is like uh, kind of like a, a parallel game, but not exactly the same. I I thought that was interesting. But like weird. an alternate universe for right. Rocket Knight. <laughs> yeah. So now I want to get Sparkster for Genesis, which is a hundred percent. I didn't even know yeah. that they were different games. Yeah, it's, it's, it's expensive. Funny. You said. Uh, well, cart only. I think it's like eighty. Ooh. Complete in boxes, pushing two hundred, two fifty right now. Okay. So that's okay. yeah. There was another game made in the series too, which was not developed by the original folks that came out for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 in 2010, which is the third game in the series. And I've never seen that game before, but I saw the the, the images and stuff, and it got decent reviews, like I don't know, sevens, eights, and Rocket Knight, the original got like eights, nines, tens, like it was really highly reviewed. Yeah. I think back in the day. I think there was a little bit of disappointment with that 2010 game when it was when it initially came out, but I think actually like tw- ten years later, people are actually a little kinder to that game. Uh, I, I I wonder why that is, you know. I don't I don't know. Well, why. <laughs> probably up until 2010, I feel like everybody wanted something that was new and fresh, and. That was probably around the time that people started appreciating more of the indie retro style stuff. Hmm. You know, that's a good point. The Xbox 360 and the PS3 were kind of like when we first started seeing like Xbox Arcade and PS3 minis and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a good point. Remember Flow? Do you remember that game that came out in the PS3? Like, I think pretty early in the. It was like one of those really, sounds really familiar, but games. I don't. I I have not. What's significant about that? I don't know. I was just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was it? Why did they look like sperm? I think you've played like the wind. You control the wind. That looks like electroplankton. Oh, really? I remember that game, but I don't think yes. I ever played it. Yeah. Like a musical kind of. Oh, it was part of the Journey three pack, too. Journey and uh, Low and. All the kind of existential, like you should be high on drugs, mm. you know, while you're playing this game, kind of free flowing stuff. No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like telling me people telling me when I should be high. <laughs> <laughs> God, I just I see that stuff in the game, and it looks like pollen, and I just start getting sniffy. <laughs> start getting sniffy. <laughs> All the Danny line. <laughs> uh, you were talking about Claritin. Do you do the Claritin D or do you just do normal Claritin? Uh, it's a like, 24 hour one. I don't know which one it is. Does honest. it does it have the D on it? Do you know? Does it have the like, you don't know. It's a blue bottle. <laughs> a bottle? <laughs> yeah. Like a bottle full of pills. Oh, <laughs> got it. Uh, yeah, I really like, like this game. Anybody who is somewhat interested in this, I highly recommend checking it out because it is, I think it's a real, it's like a, it, it definitely lands in my top 10 uh, Rocket Knight or top 10 16 bit list that I've never made. But I imagine this would be in the top 10. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's like surprisingly good. And I'm very critical of, of games often. And it, I want to go back and play more when I'm not feeling like junk, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's it's you ever get that where like you have a bad impression of something and and then you go back and see it like a movie or a game or a TV show, you see it later and you're like, this was amazing. Why did I hate it on it so much? And I can only assume I just was not in a place where I could enjoy something when I first saw it. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like you're just in a bad mood Like you don't want to see a comedy or you just, feeling sick so you're like now rocket knight always makes you feel sick every time you see it or something like that you know yeah it was it's a tough game though there's there's some frustrating stuff in there but it's it's one of those things where it's not so frustrating that you don't want to tackle it again it's just you want to figure out how to beat the 
uh, whatever thing that's frustrating you, you know? Yeah, it never feels it. unfair. It, it feels right. like you could definitely, it does feel like you have to memorize stuff. Yeah. Like it, it's definitely not one of those games that you're just going to be on your first playthrough because you're going to have to memorize some, especially boss patterns and even some enemy kind of movements. Like there's a lot of times where if you're just running forward and jump over this obvious gap, well, you don't know that there's like an enemy that's coming like right now to like right. blast you. So like you'll memorize that you need to stop in front of that gap first, wait for that enemy to come across the screen and then you jump over the gap. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff like that, which is a little bit cheesy, but that's a lot in a lot of these games. 16, the mine eight, cart eight, things eight. specifically, that's all memorization, <laughs> right? But it's not as bad as something like battle toads, like the speeder bike, right? where it's mm-hmm. just like, not only does it have to be memorized, but it has to be like pinpoint precision. <laughs> Like to the nanosecond. <laughs> Man, I don't know if I ever beat that the speeder bike thing on Battletoads. No, I don't know if I did either. We'll have to go back to that game sometime. That, oh, that, that game is weird, though, because it came out like on the NES, the Genesis. Did it come out on the Super Nintendo as well? Uh, well, there's multiple Battletoad games on Super Nintendo. There's like yeah? three. Oh, okay. Two or three. Battletoads and Battle Maniacs, Battletoads and Double Dragon. Can't remember if there's another one or not. Okay. Yeah. I highly recommend this one. I hope that everybody checks this one out. We're cruising here. We're done talking about Rocket Knight, aren't we? <laughs> I know. We're already done. <laughs> it's like, where we're do just, we go to next? We're hammering this show out. <laughs> I'm like looking at the time. It's only been 45 minutes. <laughs> do you have any pickups this week? I do. I do. Uh, I well, can first start of all, before you do your pickups. Tell me yeah. why my copy of Rocket Knight is so much more valuable than I ever thought. What's the? Is it because there's a little picture of Rocket Knight on the bottom, directly under the U, whereas the early copies or the copies from Mexico had it from the E? <laughs> <laughs> He's he's reaching so hard right now. I don't. Oh, this Mustang gas is expensive, homie. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Like mine's exactly the same. Yeah. I, I don't know much about. Uh, I have not researched. That's a good point. I have not researched like anything about releases of Rocket Knight. I don't think Sega really had a whole bunch of like revisions on their stuff. I have not gotten into Sega revisions much um you know nintendo on everything had like rev a and you look at the manual and it had like yeah. a different code and all this that and the other and like i don't think sega has any of that stuff one and thing now I, you just like one thing i don't like about the game is that it, it's got like this kind of brown yellow box it, and it doesn't it's not like the red stripes or the the black grid that you're used to on genesis games so it looks right. weird in the in the middle of all your Looks Genesis a games. Yeah. yeah. But, oh, did you, uh, have you seen the Mega Drive version of the art? No. Go Google that real quick. <laughs> so on the Genesis version, uh, Sparkster's mouth is closed and he looks, you know, ready for battle and stuff. But as Briar's about to find out, the Mega Drive version of the art is slightly different. And I'll let him describe that to you once he finds it. It's the same game, though, I think. Albeit probably a little bit, you know. Oh, okay, I got it. Dumbed down. Oh. I don't know, it's not that different. It's just his mouth is open. Yeah, but <laughs> just the expression on his face. Yeah, he looks friendlier. He looks like he's he's a little <laughs> more menacing for the for the American audience. But for the Mega Drive version, he looks a little friendly. He looks like he's about to say, hey. Let's do Rocket Knight adventure things. Come and have an adventure with me. The Rocket Knight. I'm an opossum, by the way. I know you couldn't tell. <laughs> wow, you're getting that a lot. And it says featuring Sparkster on the front, too, which this version does not say that. Oh, yeah. I prefer uh, uh, almost always Mega Drive art to the American version. But not in this particular case. 
Oh, and on the Sparkster Rocket Knight Adventures 2 cover, it actually says Rocket Knight Adventures 2, which mm-hmm. I don't think it does in America. Well, probably because it's a different game. Yeah. It's not the proper sequel. Yeah. In America, on the Genesis, it just says Sparkster. But oh, the Genesis. The Mega, is, yeah. yeah, the Mega Drive yeah. version says Rocket Knight Adventures 2. Anyhow, hook me <laughs> up with some of those hot, hot picks. <laughs> All right. So... First of all, I forgot something. Well, okay, so I'll start with with Sparkster with Rocket Knight Adventures. Yeah, yeah. I picked this up on eBay and I messaged the guy. I was like, "I'll pay your asking price if you can ship it priority." He's like, "All right." And uh, so, and I had it in hand like two days later, and he lived That's in like nice. Ohio, so I was very surprised because I was worried that I wasn't going to get it in time to like play the cart, and I would have had to deal with emulation or something. Yeah. So and it's it's mint. It's like nice, nice, nice condition. Actually, I can That's hold nice. it. It was the best copy I could find on eBay. So it's like really like it doesn't have any. Yeah, that looks like perfect. Yeah. So that's number one. Uh, number two, which actually I had gotten a few weeks ago. I got it. It was kind of my birthday present to myself in early May, mm-hmm. but I forgot to talk about it last week. And as soon as we went offline, I was like, damn it, I forgot. <laughs> but this, uh, I've been looking for one for a long time, and I want to get one in box eventually, but I got a power glove. Oh, my finally. God. You just got like 17.6% sex here. It's in nice shape. It smells like smoke, like most old and yes, yeah, accessories do. Of course, everybody spoke to the eighties. <laughs> everybody, even like six-year-old kids. Does it fit your hand? I, Have you tried to put it on your hand? It, yeah, I did. Um, it it fits well enough. Anyways, they had like two sizes. They had the large and then the not large. And I'm not. I, mean, I don't think this is the large, but my hands are not that big. I didn't uh, know that they had two sizes of the power glove. Pretty sure. Yeah. Was the actual had, like, plastic a, a different size, or just the the fabric mitt? Um, <laughs> there's so many things I can do with this. Uh, I, I think it was like they had like a kid size and then and then a adult size, basically. Oh, really? But the gloves are bigger. I think the arm thing's a little. I think it's just ultimately just everything's a little bigger. Maybe. Really? Good question. Have you? Just, so you haven't tried it on a game yet? No, I've not. Are you gonna? I don't know. I've heard it's not good. I don't know. I watched The Wizard, and they said in that movie that it was pretty awesome. (laughs) Which was basically an advertisement for this accessory. How dare you? I love that movie, by the way. (laughs) One of my favorite movies, but it's 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 bad. bad. (laughs) It's the best advertisement I've ever seen. <laughs> you know that that black case from the movie with the yeah. thing with like the they make that and I've seen it on eBay. <laughs> really? That actual case. It's expensive. Like it goes for like oh, 400 bucks. Oh, you need that. <laughs> <laughs> like the case itself runs like 3 400 bucks. I'm like it's not worth it. It's just a case. It's but it's not from worth the it. movie. How are you going to have a power glove not in that case? I know. That's why I want the box. You got to rig it up too so that when you open the case, like LEDs shine and like a little bit, a little bit of like mist comes out, like a little bit of smoke. <laughs> Poof. Like, <sighs> like, like Shaggy just opened the door on the mystery van, you know, just <laughs> that's not smoke or that's not mist. Right. A little bit of smoke. Maybe <laughs> if it actually you- smelled like tobacco. Like a little bit of like like cigarette smoke just kind of poofs. <laughs> At first, I thought you were saying Shaggy, like the artist Shaggy, like the oh okay. Da, 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 no, da, da, da. no, Scooby Doo's best friend is named Shaggy, right? I'm not crazy, am I? No, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. You should definitely get the box. I don't know what you're thinking. Of course, you're gonna buy the box. You might as well just start talking yourself into that one now. Oh, $400. Man. It's only $400 <laughs> to have a display case, a movie replica display case for your power glove. What the fuck else are you going to keep that in? 
You want to know what it's in right now? What? That's unacceptable. That is Boxley unacceptable. Shipped in. Eventually, it'll Amazon go on a shelf. Box. You gotta get the box eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think actually uh, at Ikea, they sell like those wooden hands that are posable. That'd be a pretty good way to display it. Yeah. Like just standing up cool. on the hand. I think those yeah. are like $10. So until you save up $400 temporarily, <laughs> wow. you can get the $10 hand from Ikea. Until you get that. That's box. a good idea though. Like, yeah, like a handstand. Yeah. You also got to try it, man. You got to plug that thing into an NES and give it a shot. I gotta find. I don't know if I have any games that it works with. Uh, we'll just load them up on your. Uh, Actually, uh, you're supposed card. to be able to play like Mike Tyson's Punch Out with that. Thing. You can play any game, I think, with it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. All the buttons on the side. Yeah. No, I mean you can map the controls to be whatever you want them to be. Oh, there's no controls, Briar. Yeah. It's a glove that you hold like this, and you use your other hand to hit the. No, buttons. no, the fingers. The fingers do stuff. No. They have sensors in them. Do they? Yeah. I don't think they do, Briar. They do. I'm 100% on this. Like, each Briar. finger does a different thing. I don't think they do. Oh, I am. I'm willing to make a 25 cent piece bet. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's sensors on the front here. Yeah. And then there's buttons. Yeah. The fingers, though, do stuff. Uh, it doesn't feel like there's anything in there. Now I gotta oh, Google this. Man, maybe you don't deserve that box. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta. I, we got a NES Power Glove. I'm a hundred percent sure. I'm a hundred percent sure. I never owned a Power Glove. Uh, I was too poor when I was a kid, but I wanted a Power Glove. Yeah. Uh, but everybody said they were terrible. Everybody said they were terrible. There's a documentary about the Power Glove. On yes. Netflix the Power or of Amazon Glove. Amazon or something. Yeah. Power of Glove, yep. There are two ultrasonic speakers, transmitters in the glove, and three ultrasonic microphones around the TV monitor. The ultrasonic speakers take turns transmitting a short burst of 40 kilohertz sound, and the system measures the time it takes for the sound to reach the microphones. The triangulation circulation is performed to determine the XYZ location of each of the two speakers, which specifies the yaw and roll of the hand. The only dimension it cannot calculate is the pitch, so like front and back. So literally, it just is the position of your hand, and then you press the buttons. I'm like, and the fingers. Hmm. All right. People out there that grew up with a power glove, tell us. You tell us. <laughs> Why don't you tell us? You have one. Plug it into something. <laughs> <laughs> Their response dictates what I do with it. How about All that? right. All right. Sounds good. There All has right, what to else be a way get? to like. Uh, yeah. There has to be a way to like hook it up and play modern games, though. A hundred percent. There's got to be. Somebody definitely makes an NES controller adapter for PCs. Pretty dope. But you got to have the sensors for it to work, pretty sure. Do you have the sensors? Yeah, but I mean, like, I don't know if you could hook up the PC to run the sensors. Somebody's made an adapter. <laughs> it's on Etsy. Zim. <laughs> a Zim NES adapter. All right. <laughs> so a lot, of, a lot of the games I got this time around were not, like, super expensive games but they're mm -hmm. games that are complete in box and in good shape and ones that i wanted so uno racers for snes yes this is a classic did you ever play you ever play that yeah i find it to be a very addicting game it, it just it's a good feeling game it's fun i'm pretty sure it's the only like unicycle related video game that exists probably i'm gonna need you to read chat right now I don't know if I want to. You should. <laughs> Apparently, the fingers do indeed do stuff. They do stuff. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I believe you. I just, I'm literally just not sure. So I'd have to, yeah. Okay. Unirasers. Yep. Have you played Unirasers? I have a long time ago, not recently. Yeah. I feel like the, the Power of Glove documentary didn't really 
did it talk about the fingers doing stuff? I don't know. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen the documentary. I mostly yeah. remember just the one dude who walks around New York City with it on all the time. Yes. <laughs> that was really like kind of my board. takeaway from <laughs> that documentary. So this is actually a fantastic Ooh, what's that? Marvel game. Spider-Man for SNES. I don't even think I'm aware of that game. Really? Yeah. So like here, if you can see the, the art, it looks really, really good. It does look good. It's not a super expensive game either. I have the Spider-Man for the Genesis, which is kind of a cool game, but was an early Genesis game. So like, you know, but I didn't even know there was a, a Spider-Man for the SNES. Yeah, I think it's, I th- do they have the same, is that the same game for, it's LJN. I just, crap. Oh, so it's not going to be good. <laughs> damn it yeah it doesn't look good either i'm watching a playthrough of it it doesn't look particularly actually good. no there's good reviews dude yeah four out of five eight out of ten nine out of ten wow seven out of ten it might be the or... best lgn game ever made it looks really stiff talking... wait yeah the animated series. Uh, LJN produced a lot of mediocre to absolutely terrible Marvel licensed games. And while this game is no adamantium rage, it's no maximum carnage either. Existing somewhere in between. It's not frustratingly difficult to point to the point of rage quitting, nor is it nostalgic fun. Just a run-of-the-mill side-scroller starring Spider-Man set in a universe of well-loved animated series. Apparently, it's got good music. Hmm. There's a go. Spider Man, Spider Man. He's got a way. Spider Pig, Spider Pig. <laughs> All right. What else you get? All right. Uh, this is a classic. Who doesn't love themselves some Tecmo Super Basketball? Right. No? <laughs> really? It's got the NBA license. Oh, my God. This was such a fun game. Was it? Oh, my God. Yeah. Tecmo. Like, all the Tecmo sports games were fun back in the day. Really? Football, basketball. The only one I ever played was uh, Tecmo Bowl, basically. Yeah, but you enjoyed that, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is the basketball version. Okay. I never (laughs) played it. Damn it. Completely drawing a blank on this one. It's it's one of those things where it's very very simple controls, like you know, one button for for uh, shoot, one button for steal, one sh- you know, steal mm-hmm. and block are like the same buttons. Like the buttons are really easy, and it's all about timing. So you hold the 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 fire or excuse me, the shoot button, and you let go at the right time. And if you you know you have a higher percentage chance of making it in, and all that stuff. But it's amazing it's amazing in the way that you know early 90s sports games were amazing but i think all of my basketball time on the 16-bit platforms went to uh nba jam NBA jam yeah i mean that's a great one too don't get me wrong you got to try out tecmo basketball i'll put it on a very long list of games i need to try <laughs> right now <laughs> tag him on twitter and let him know he needs to play it all right uh I finally, finally completed my copy of Tony Hawk Pro Skater. I had the box and manual, but I didn't have the cart. And it was not very expensive cart, so I just picked hmm. it up. So now I have a complete in box. Of course, that game came out for the N64 because it was so popular. But the PlayStation's got to be the one you want, right? It's got to be because you, you get the CD soundtrack. You get the actual... Like real music from real live bands that you've heard of. Pretty sure it's all the same music in the 64 version. Yeah, but what is it? Like digitize and compress the hell? Like, I don't know. This is all I had, Briar. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Damn it. Like shitting all over my childhood. My bad. It's fine. I didn't realize <laughs> it was such a bad childhood. <laughs> 
Have I'm you played? Have you played the updated ones? Uh yes, yes, I have. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, they're actually Sorry. coming out with a like a PS5 version of that, which I'm pretty excited about. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was before they got gobbled. That team got gobbled up by Xbox Blizzard. or Blizzard or whatever. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, they're going to be working on, I think, expansions for Blizzard games Diablo or something like that. Diablo. Yeah, you're right. Diablo. I, I was disappointed because I was hoping that they'd kind of come out with like three and four as well. But those guys actually were also the guys that worked on Destiny. Are they? Yeah, Vicarious Visions. Oh, you're right. Yeah, they did a great job with, with what they did in, in Destiny. Yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to what they're going to do with the Gabo, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, now now I got to keep my eyes on Diablo. It's fine. Yeah. All right. So I picked up... Sometimes you just got to pick up some cardboard. This is literally just the box. It is in very good shape. Uh, I paid 50 bucks for it. But this completes my copy of Mario Party. So I had the carton manual. I just didn't have the box. Sometimes you just got to pick up some cardboard. Yeah. It's you funny, the, the box, the front of the box, like the art, makes it look like it's Mario Party 3. Right. Because he's holding a dice that has a 3 facing, like, kind of the the viewer. Right. So it poorly thought out, but they may not have known that they were going to make another one, so. Yeah. You never know. Uh, and then a couple of pickups from the game store, using credit. As always. So this game I'm I mainly picked up just because it's in such good shape. Uh Brandish for the SNES, which is kind of like a Zelda Link to the Past clone a little bit, kind of sorta. Okay. But it's one of those kind of under the under the radar type games. But a mm. lot of people that I've read reviews of, they're like, you know, it's not the best game in its likeness, but it's it's a worthy playthrough. It's worth checking out if you like those Zelda type games. So I was like, all right. Okay. And then one of the, I don't know, this would probably be a top 30 uh, uh, NES game called Rockin' Cats. But check out the it. developer. Atlas. Wow. Yeah. Pretty much anything Atlas made, I feel like, was good and, and rare and whatnot. So this cart was 125 bucks. It's, cur it's currently going for more than that. It's currently going for, like, north of $150. Um, but it's, uh, it's a platformer, and you're a cat. And it's like a yeah, like an adventure platformer. It's supposed to be really good. It got really good reviews, <clears throat> like eights, sevens, eights, nines, and uh, it's like one of those games. You know, Atlas made a lot of good stuff back in the day. Man, there really was difference in what was deemed like acceptable culturally in the eighties compared to the, this game. If I clicked on a long play just to take a look at this game. And the first part I clicked on it is the blue rocking cat. I don't know if there are multiple rocking cats punching Native Americans in totem poles. Oh, like, <laughs> like straight up, like the the super stereotypical, like one feather out the back of their headband, braids, and like skin as red as a beet. You couldn't get away with that now, boy. I'll yeah. tell you that. The, the, I've been watching some stand-up comedy too. Oh uh, yeah, some of it's some of it's from like <laughs> 2010, 2011, and it's pretty racially charged. Yeah, and then I see the same comedians in like 2017, 2018, and they literally like talk about how that they can't joke about that stuff anymore. Like it's New. it's serious. Cancel culture is a is a real thing, and comedians, most of all people, are aware of it. <laughs> this game does yeah, look this, pretty fun, though. I mean, it, it, it got good reviews. So. Maybe you get to beat up some Jewish people at the end. I don't know. <laughs> Dad? <clears throat> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's terrible. Anyhow, what else did you get? That's it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kind of obsessed with rocking cats it's spelled with a K and no a G at the end of rocking. There is a, uh, what is that called? You know, that little accent piece. Oh, uh, yeah. The, like an apostrophe apostrophe. Thank you. Couldn't think of that one. 
Well, kind of a short episode, I guess, this week, but uh, we do have something special coming up next week that we're not talking, not next week, next episode that we're not talking about yet, I don't think, but we are pretty excited about. When Do we not want to announce that yet? I don't know. Do we? <laughs> <laughs> Is it all confirmed and everything? Yeah. Okay. We can talk about it then. All right. So I got connected with somebody on Twitter because they are a retro game collector and somebody connected them to me because he's trying to complete like sets of games, like full sets. He's trying to complete like the original Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, DS, Game Boy Color, all that. Like, you know, they have like eight, nine hundred games in them. And I just happen to have a whole bunch of like cheap you know, like one to five, maybe one to ten dollar games that I'm willing to go for very cheap because I don't want them. And so I have a list of like 80 games and reached out to him and figured out that we have a lot in common in kind of how we collect and and why we collect and all that kind of stuff. And he is somebody that was on America's Got Talent a, a few years ago and got third place. His name is Ryan Nee Miller. He's a comedian. Uh, he's currently on tour, like in the Midwest, off and on. He's super funny, but he he also has his own like podcast with a couple of other comedians. So you may have seen like around Twitter and stuff. And a lot of you probably would recognize him if you Googled his name. But he's going to be on our show next episode on the 15th. And I asked him to choose a game to play to talk about. And he chose The Last Guardian. I'm psyched about Which, this. I've never played this. Right. It looks like a perfect game. <laughs> he says it's one of his top five or wait, is it the last? Uh, excuse me. The Guardian Legend is what it's called. Not last Guardian. Guardian Legend. So and what he said was it's got like a bunch of different types of games all mashed up into one. It's not like one game. It's got. It's got like sh shoot 'em up stuff. It's got platforming. It's got, you know, like Zelda type mechanics. It's just all sorts of stuff mashed up into one game. And uh it should be very, very fun. It looks nice too. It's a yeah. it's an NES game, right? Like this is a good looking NES game. It sort of reminds me, remember when we played the Star Wars game for the NES? It sort of reminds me of that, not in quality or graphic style, it's just like the variety <laughs> of gameplay available. Right. Right. Like I'm looking forward to this. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and beat this for next episode. Really? Yeah. It it just it's really intriguing to me because there's just so much cool stuff happening when I look at like a long play of it. Oh, I'm reading it. It says, How long is the Guardian Legend? Like five to seven five to seven hours? Uh, I'm watching a long play of it, and it's two and a half hours. Well. But that's somebody who knows what they're doing, I'm sure. Yeah, it's so, yeah. not a super expensive game either for those that want to pick it up. I think it's like somewhere in the $15 to $20 range. Oh, maybe I'll try and get a copy of it. But now that I'm I trying to get play... a complete copy of it. It's really difficult to find. I have Is a it... cart, but yeah. Uh, I might play it on the mystery just so I can do... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh quick saves. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's nice now. Good point. I wonder if it's got saves on it. I also Jay, I've started using this thing for uh on my mister to play retro games, which has been really nice. This is like a arcade stick, obviously, but there's no stick. There's like uh there's the sad W keys on it. It's really nice. Like it's super easy to like control like side scrolling games with this. And like it, it you're kind of sitting at a keyboard as opposed to having a controller in your hand. Like I, I, I've used this on my Mr. for a long time because I like playing with the arcade stick, but I just wanted to test this thing out. It's really like a precise way to play a platforming game. It's kind of Yeah, neat. I feel like that thing changes every time I see it. Yeah, I I play with this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this is that for anybody the um audio listeners this is an 8 2 arcade stick that i put i took the arcade stick out of the actual joystick and i put in what's called an odin which is um it's the wazda keys like the the four keys that would be on a keyboard that you would control movement with and it's it's kind of fun i'll probably put the joystick back in it eventually but it's well, it's neat 
That's cool. I feel like a lot of speedrunners that use keyboard and mouse, you know, get the fastest speed. So yeah. Um. So we're doing Guardian Legend next week, or two weeks, two weeks yep. from now. Uh, I'm really looking Which forward to that. That's gonna be fun. Fifteenth. Yep. Should we wrap this one up? Yeah, short and sweet. Short and sweet. See the point. Thanks, Jay, for coming out today. Where Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube at Jay Sniperton. We just wrapped up our St. Jude Play Live campaign last Friday, and our community raised almost 11000 And uh, so our our channel has raised over 100000 for charity in six years, which is pretty cool. That's insane. But, That's uh, an amazing number. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's nuts. But I'm typically live super late at night, so if you're ever up late or up early and want to come hang out, you're more than welcome. How about you, Briar? I'm Brian Rabbit. You can find me on Twitter if you want to talk some random stuff. Uh, I just uploaded a video to YouTube. Uh, it's absolutely the best loot crate opening you'll ever see on YouTube. Uh, part two will be coming soon. It just couldn't be contained in one video. Uh, so part two will be coming soon. I'll also probably be reviewing this Odin relatively soon. Um, and I got some other interesting product that I just found out is coming my way that I'll be reviewing as well uh, that I can't quite nice. talk about. Ooh, secrets. Yeah. <laughs> secrets like, I don't know if it's going to show up, so I'm not going to promise anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got it. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to do it for this show. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in two weeks. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>